Hello my friends and welcome back to another tutorial. This week I'm going to focus on um, light and shade. I'm going to paint a beautiful robin redbreast with its wings full out, open, coming into land. Um, there's lots of light and shade hitting the robin and feathers, wide out feathers. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful picture. So I'm going to paint that this week. It's going to be fun and um, something different I think. So let's, uh, with further ado, let's crack on and have a bit of fun with lots of colour. Um, a nice subdued background, nice soft, dark kind of a background. And lots of light catching the robin and catching the feathers. Um, so yes, really eye-catching. So this is going to be fun. Follow me along if you wish. Um, grab your, your, your paints and your canvas and um, have a try, uh, try painting this. So let's, um, let's, let's have a bit of fun with this. I have a canvas here ready to go. So without further ado, let's have some fun painting. Don't go anywhere. Okay, here we go. This is my canvas. Um, there's a reference photograph. Isn't that just gorgeous? Beautiful robin, red breast, wings open out all the way. And I just love the light in this. This is going to be more of a study on light and shadow really, rather than the painting itself, although the painting, the, the, the photograph itself is beautiful. It's more of a study on shadow and to, how to create nice shadows and lights to bring something to life. So that's what I want to paint. Isn't that just beautiful? And it's very complimentary because of the blue against the orange and yellow. So they're really complimentary colors. Let me tell you what palette I have. A lovely colorful palette today. Titanium white, Naples yellow, cadmium yellow pale, a little cerulean blue. I might not need that, um, but I put it out just in case. A little phthalo blue, lamp black, cadmium red, a lizard crimson and some burnt cyanide. Um, I think that's all we need for today. I also have some turpentine with some linseed oil. I primed my canvas once with just a white undercoat. I rubbed it down with some fine sandpaper. Hopefully that will give me a nice smooth surface to work on. All right. So, without further ado, let's go. Let's see if we can have a bit of fun with this, shall we? I'm just going to make sure I have all the brushes I need here with me today. I have uh, my blender brush. I also have a couple of palette knives, wherever they are. Here they are. A couple of these might come in handy. Um, so that's it. Okay, I'm going to start off by painting this lovely background. And I'll start with a nice, nice light blue in the center. Okay, let me dampen my brush. Pick up some thinners, just a little thinners on your brush. Um, it just needs to be damp. Okay, I'm going to take phthalo blue. Lots of white. And I might take a hint of cerulean. Okay, I just want to make the center of the painting pop. So a very bright color behind this robin, okay? Just in the center. And I may add a touch of black because, or actually, maybe a hint of crimson. I want it kind of subdued. That's the kind of word I'm looking for. A subdued bright color. That's still too bright, isn't it? Let's darken that right down a bit. I'll take a hint of black and then a hint of crimson. The crimson is just keeping it warm. All right. Mix that right in there, make it a good mix. Let's have a look and see. It could even be slightly bluer. You could probably even use French Ultramarine for this as well, if that's all you have. That would, be, that would make a nice combination. Let me try this. Okay. I'm just worried about going too dark on the background because I want a lovely kind of dark against the light with the robin. So I'm worried about going a little bit too dark. So I may add a little white into this, just a touch. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to let the robin red breast kind of fade into the background. Does that make sense? Um, so I just, I want to be careful. I just want to be careful with this. Now, for the wings, I'm just going to go literally down under the wings like this, very loosely, okay? 
and we will kind of paint through some of this background anyway later on and I really love how this background darkens as it comes out I really really like that it's a beautiful effect isn't it and let's go over to this side I'm going to darken it slightly as it comes over look because I don't know is that a bit bright it probably is a bit bright let's take some black into this and a hint of crimson again the crimson really is only just to keep it warm I don't want it too cold do you understand what I mean and let's just go like this again I'm not too bothered by the feathers of the wings and all that kind of thing okay this is something you should try I think this would make it it's, it's the type of painting that's really good for practice and you can add your own colors in and all that kind of thing so you know if you're sitting around at home and you're kind of struggling to get into that vibe that painting vibe this type of a scene will really ignite your passion again for painting because there's lots of darks and lots of lights and anything like that is really eye-catching okay go up there like that let's go right across i really want to capture the darkness as it goes out that's my that's my main goal really i want to get that lovely darkness as it comes out let's go around the tail like that soften that in and we can really start going very dark now i think with this let's go right into some phthalo blue some black two of those maybe a touch of crimson just a touch again just to warm it up now there that's the color that i really like up there and to keep it nice and warm to keep the blue warm i want to put plenty of pink into this okay i do have a little thinners in this as well by the way i do like to pick up a little thinners as i go along um it just helps the paint move around that little bit better and it's only a tiny amount just with the corner of my brush that's all i'm picking up all right because i primed my canvas um i don't feel i need lots and lots of thinners so the primer is really working very nicely I'm going to just blue it a little bit, take a bit of white and a little touch more crimson. There we go. And we go around this, fill this in. Now you could of course paint this any colour you like, okay? It's completely up to yourself. I just love this blue, this rich dark background I think it really is eye-catching for the robin. It's just a stunning colour. But you could push um, like a light pink to a dark pink or you could push even just black or you could put a brown or something like that. Because there are so many colours in the Robin Redbreast that almost any colour will work. Because there's bound to be at least one colour that will complement the Robin. Okay? There's bound to be. So any colour you like really would do. I just love this blue. I love that much dark background. Now, I will soften that in a moment with the blender brush. So let's just continue on down towards the bottom. Let's get some black. Again, a touch of thinners in that. Tiny touch. Some phthalo blue and a little crimson. Let's go down here. We start. I always tend to start at the corners with the dark colour and work my way in. It's just much easier to soften it in, you see? Dragging it across the canvas. There we go, dragging it into that lighter colour. And come across. I do hope this painting turns out nice. 
I really do. Because it's such a, it's such a stunning image of a robin. Um, I haven't seen one like this in a long time. And it just really caught my eye. It really did. So I thought, yes, I have to try and paint this. It's absolutely gorgeous. And lean right down hard on the brush, okay? Get all that paint off. Don't be shy. Crisscross, crisscross all the way along. Remember, we can use our soft brush to soften all of this in together later. Okay? So don't be shy. Again, let's get some black. Some phthalo blue. And a little crimson. I want to add plenty of crimson into this. I want this lovely, warm, deep blue. You know what I mean? Nice and warm. Now let's go up there and soften it in around the bird. And then carry it across. You could even paint over the tail if you really wanted. Okay? Um, it's no problem at all. If you feel it's too tricky to go around the tail, just paint right over the tail. And we can put it back in later. If we're not confident with um, going around lines and that kind of thing. Let's soften that out. Go right across there. Soften everything together. So you could even use a blender brush for this or just your regular brush. Okay? Whichever one you have will do fine. Now, let's have a look at that and see what we're looking like. No, that's not bad at all, is it? Now, what I want to do is darken just the corners. To give that sort of vignette kind of a feeling. Crimson and black. Let's go with crimson and black. A lot of crimson, okay? So it's nice and pinky, but a dark, dark, blacky pink. Let's go along like that, okay? And let's go along the other side, giving it this beautiful closed-in kind of a feeling. And we'll do the same at the bottom. Crimson and black. Right across the bottom, bring it up on the sides then, you see. Take a little bit more for that side. I'm really excited just to get started with the robin. I really am. The colours are gorgeous, I think. Okay, let's get the blender brush and soften this together. Now, I'll start with the centre, I suppose, to keep the centre nice and bright and clean. And then I'll work my way out, okay? I'm going to go right across, left to right. Getting rid of those lines. Losing those brush strokes, you see? Just getting, oh, you see I picked up some white. I flicked my brush out and I picked up some of the white there, you see? So let me just clean the brush, soften that back in. There we go. Done. Okay, happy accident. Nothing to be too worried about. And I'm happy with that. I'll just curve the side a little bit more. So you can shape the paint with your brush, you see. The great thing about oils is you can shape the paint and create the direction that you want with the paint. It's fantastic for that. Okay, let me take a look at this now. All right, I'm happy enough with that. Let's just leave it. Let's just crack on and have fun with this Robin Redbreast. I'll take another brush. Let me find a nice clean, flat, flat brush now for this. Okay, now I have one here. A little bit of paint on it. I'm... I'm very bold because I never clean my brushes properly. I'm just very lazy that way. And I pay for it in the long run, but I'm a very, very impatient person because I'm so busy, which is a bad thing. So I'm very bold. Right. I think I will start with um, the main body of the Robin Redbreast, I think. Now, you, ordinarily, usually, I would leave this background dry because I don't want colours mixing and all that kind of stuff. But I think we should be okay, if we're careful. Um, what I will do is just rub 
that little bit of blue off his head just there that'll help okay let's start let's start with the head so i'm going to mix um it's kind of a brownie pink okay brownie purple i think i get some burnt umber actually if you could bear with me just one moment I shall get some burnt umber on the palette. One very important colour I forgot. Okay, let's take a damp brush. Let's take some burnt umber and some white and a little crimson. So I take a touch of that blue look. That will just kind of dull down the pinkiness of it. Okay. Now the head is pretty much kind of straight at an angle, isn't it? Alright, now we have little brown on the wings. So I'm just going to go along, wherever I see that bit of brown, I'm just going to pop a little touch of it in, okay? Comes down like that. And you really don't have to spend too much time on all the details. Okay, just, you know, I just like to make sure I get all the colours I want in first. So all these lovely darks. There's a lot of lovely dark colour on this side because, of course, that's in shade. Um, so, for example, as the brown comes down here, look, right? You can see I'm going to take a bit of black and a bit of red. And I'm just going to simply pop a little bit of that with my brush into the fur or the hair the feathers rather as it comes down the side it's going to darken look okay and you really don't have to be absolutely perfect with this okay you don't um, you just make it what you want I just take my time and just keep looking at the reference photograph so where wherever you see some darks you just pop some darks in, okay? The rest will take care of itself. Don't worry about trying to create feathers and all this kind of detail, okay? It's just too much work, it's too difficult. The brush does the work for you, all right? Now I'm gonna start doing this lovely rich ready orange that we have down here, okay? I hope you can see everything okay now. Let me just make sure you can see everything fine. Little bit of cadmium red. I'm going to take some burnt sienna as well. So that'll give me a beautiful, rich, dark, browny red. Okay? And even, let's take a hint of crimson as well, look. So I'm going to start with this very dark colour. And I just drew with my pencil um, a little line just to show where the shadow is going. Okay? That's all. Nothing else. Let's put this in, it comes down, it comes around like that, doesn't it? Now, I'm going to start putting in some cadmium yellow. So it's getting a bit more orange then, you see. Let's take some more. You can see, there's a beautiful orange just here, isn't there? Comes down to the tip of the beak. It also comes out on the sides. I'm going to put a little of that on this side. I know it's darker, but I like to get in some lighter colours first and then work some darks into the lights. Okay, That's generally how I like to approach this type of thing. The important thing is just to keep this line for the shadow. You see the way that's very dark over there, that shadow? Let's take some brown and some cadmium red. Let's go over here and let's just feed in some of that really dark browny red into the shadow side over here, look. And I'm simply just pulling the brush down in that direction, okay? No, isn't that lovely? 
I'll pop a little bit of that brownie red in to the wing as well. Okay. So it's coming along now a little at a time, isn't it? And the most important part of this is the lights. When I start putting on the lights soon, it's really going to jump out. Okay, it's going to jump right out of the canvas. And that's the exciting part. Now I'm going to create this shadow on the nose. You see the kind of where the beak is? That dark coming down there. I'm going to create that shadow just with this brownie red I have. You see, I'm mixing it into the colours which are already there then, you see. And that really helps. Now we have a little black with some crimson and i'm going to put that rich dark 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 blacky pink just in underneath so i'm creating the shape of underneath the head you see the way that shape comes down lovely shape there and then it turns where the shadow is hitting it and it comes down, doesn't it? But the brush strokes then are softening all of this colour out. They really help. It's almost pure black in there. You can hardly even make out what's in there because it's so dark. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to pop some of that down the corner. You could, of course, if you want to, just use a small pointy brush for all of this. And I will go to my pointy brush soon. I just I find it easier to do all the filling in with my slightly bigger flat brush. And then go with your details later. Let's put in this very bright yellow on this side. Just taking some cadmium yellow with a hint of that red, which is on the palette already. Look, just a tiny touch. Lots of paint. Let's go and fill this in. Just where they meet. And when they meet then, I'm just going to simply kind of pull them together ever so slightly. To create the fur, you see? Little, little feathers. So you can see now, we already have that light starting to come out. I'm going to take some of the cadmium yellow with a hint of white and I'm going to pop some of that on the top of the nose pulling it inwards to the centre, you see? Just like that and a little bit on that side coming down The flat brush is actually brilliant for this because you can use the hairs on the tip of your brush to create like these little feathers, you see? Create lots of little feathers now, I'll take a hint more white, and that will give us even more bright. And I'm just going here and there, you see, on the feathers, just to create those little touches of white, here and there. Okay. There we go. So you see now how simple that was. It was just nice and simple. It really was. Now let's go down to the white. Or we could finish off this with the pointy brush if you like. That's another thing we could do. I'm wondering should I zoom in? Or can you see okay? I hope you can see all right. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna leave it, look, just for the sake of it. I'll leave it well alone. Because if I go messing with the camera now, bad things will happen. Let's take some white and some yellow and I'm going to go up here and there's a really bright section up there, okay? Then it turns and comes down. I'm just really getting some very bright colours in here and there with this pointy brush and a little couple along here like that. It's really just to create a little roughage. That's kind of all I'm, that's all I'm trying to do. A little roughage on the 
chest of the bird, okay? Ruffled feathers, that kind of thing. And you don't have to go mad with this at all. Okay, I'll leave that side alone. I'm going to go to the darker side now and I'm going to take some black, little thinners, little thinners, some black, and let's get some crimson with cadmium red. So we have a very rich, dark plum. And I'll go in here. I just want to form the dark side of the bird here first, just on the chest. Um, let's take some black, pure black. And I'm going to use that because when I'm doing this, it's mixing with the color already there. So it's not pure black. Do you understand what I mean? It's picking up bits of the red. And it's turning into a blacky red, a dark red, you see. So I'm just pulling some of that through. Just to create some nice dark hair on the feathers. On the dark side of the bird hair. Little flicks, you see? Tiny, tiny flicks. And I'm going to go up here, create a little darkness up around where the eye is. You see a little bit of darkness there, coming down, back of the head. Let me take some cadmium red. I'm going to pop some cadmium red into the board here and there. Okay, let me stand back now for a second. Take a look at this. That's not bad now, is it? Not bad at all. Next, I'm going to take some cadmium yellow with a little white. And I'm going to just come across into the lighter section. Give it a couple of tiny little flicks with your brush. That's literally all I'm doing. But what I'm doing at the same time is I'm forming the shape of that shade in there. You see, look. I'm following the line of the shade around, creating the shape. It's basically all I'm doing. And I'm going to pop a few in here. There's a little bit of a glow just on the dark side as well. Just one or two, okay? It's literally just tiny, tiny flicks with the brush. That's all I'm doing. Do try it, okay? It's actually much easier than you think it is. Tiny, tiny flicks. Now I'm going to do, um, I'm going to go up with a bit of crimson. Just go along the ridge by the big there, okay? There's a very dark ridge just along there. It really acts as a nice separator from the dark side to the light side. I'm just going to go in there, and I might even take some more black and crimson. I know this now seems like a long process, okay, and it is a long process, but just try it and take your time with it, okay, just, it's real fun, it's actually really a lot of fun, just take your time. Okay, I'll stop at that just for now, and I want to just get those nice brights on the top of the board up here, okay? There is a lovely bright coming in to play it just here. Kind of comes down, doesn't it? It's just a little touch of white, that's all. And I'm going to pop a tiny amount of white, um, maybe with a hint of blue, okay? Just along the tip of the head, all right? You see lovely tiny little bits of white, whitey blue feathers up there.
put a little phthalo blue through there as well and you can see those little touches of phthalo blue even with some crimson they really add a touch of um, highlight to the shaded parts of the bird okay they really bring in a touch of life into the shaded areas i'm going to do that again for you okay just so you can see some phthalo blue crimson and some white now watch how it kind of just sort of brings the shadows to life if i pop a little touch of that in there little crimson little phthalo blue and i'm gonna go just like that you see it really does it sort of brings everything to life and we go in under the shade here as well pop one or two in now i've i, I have never painted like I've never painted a bird this close with so much detail, okay? So I'm kind of going through this as, I suppose, like a novice. I don't know how this is going to turn out. It's not something that I would paint a huge amount of. So I'm kind of wary as well that it's not going to work out. So we are on the same playing field, all right? I'm just as nervous about painting this as you are about trying it. I just don't know if it's going to work out. And I have my reservations. Okay, it still might not work out. Now, let's just get the beak in. I think we can finish with the top of the board then. The beak is just a little. Tiny little beak. You can hardly even see it. It's tiny. See what I mean? Even on the photograph, you can't even see the beak. It's just completely hidden. Um, I will get the eye in. Go along here and get the eye in. I've been careful not to overdo the eye. I don't want it to look like a dinosaur. And a little touch of it. There okay now i think i'll leave it actually i need to fix that side that's not that's not at all acceptable is it comes down at an angle doesn't it okay and another tiny touch this is a hard part getting these little things right okay let's just leave it at that moving on back to our medium flat brush let's come down and do this area down here i'm going to start with a nice shadow side down here it's like a gray so a bit of brown hint of black let me just take a look at that it's kind of a gray isn't it let's just start with a gray and we can work other colors into it okay always remember when you're doing something like this you know um and you put on a color don't think that that's the only color that that's the finished color it's not a finished color okay you can see i'm going to add a tiny touch of blue into this because that's the mistake a lot of people make with this kind of stuff they put on a color and they feel it's completely wrong but you can add new colors over that so don't be don't be afraid don't be afraid to try it Now, for example, I'm going to take a little of this black colour here, okay? And I'm just simply going to use my brush to sort of flick it through, you see? I'm just kind of flicking the very tip of the brush just to create little tiny flicks with those little tiny hairs on the brush. And it basically creates some kind of roughage, makes it look rough. Let, let's, take, let's take some burnt umber. Pop a little more dumbo there. I might even take a hint of Naples yellow. And I'm going to put that just in here in this side. 
hint of white maybe. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is put in the light side. And I'm going to use simply pure, pure white. Maybe with a hint of Naples yellow. And this is really going to just jump out at the canvas. Let's try it and see. I don't know if you can hear the rain outside the studio. It is lashing down outside the studio. Absolutely lashing. A lot of people tell me it's very relaxing to listen to the rain on the studio. It may be for you, but not for me. I can tell you that. I'm going with pure white now, look. Pure white. And I'm going to add a little of that white just in here to brighten that shaded area just slightly, look. Flicking it inwards. You see? Don't be shy, just try it. Look, it's only a bit of canvas. If we make a mess of it, I will start again. If I make a mess of it. I hope I don't. But if I do, I will just start it again. So, look. Don't be... Don't be too careful, you know? Let yourself loose a little bit. I'll go back to my small brush now. Take some white. Pure white on its own. And let's create... A real bright white in there, okay? Pure white, and keep dipping into your paint every few seconds, okay? Let's get lots of thick paint, because that thick paint will stand out from the canvas, and it'll give you a very realistic feel to the feathers. All right? So don't be shy. Go right in to your paint. Okay, let's... Um just go in here and go up a little bit into the V. And you see, then I'm going to start softening that here and there into the dark. So now we're creating lovely feathers, aren't we? Tiny, tiny little feathers, you see? Little flicks of the brush, that's all it is. Then we come down. We have a nice shadow down here. I'm going to actually use a purple shadow, I think. Even though it's not on the photograph. I'm going to take some blue, some pink, and a little black, and maybe a hint of white. And I'm going to just add a little hint of a purple shadow here and there into the dark side look. Because I think it will just help it stand out a lot more. You can take a hint of brown in there. Now as it comes up, I'm going to start introducing a brownie red. And you see then it's going to almost disappear into the side of the bird up here, look, into that red. So, you can see what I mean? Just disappears into the side of the bird. Okay, so I'm going to get some Naples yellow and a lot of white. And I really want to go in and show that light right down towards the end. Down here as well, there's a lot of light. And it cuts across and it comes down, doesn't it? Okay. Now there's a little dark down here as well. I'll go for this dark grey, maybe a hint of the fawn. So on the other side of this, it's simple. No, look, I know this looks very complicated when I'm doing it here, okay? But all I'm doing is just looking closely at the photograph, okay? And picking out where I see those darks. 
Just pick them out. And I'm only working from a tiny camera, okay? But I'm just picking out where I see those darks and just popping them in loosely, okay? That's all I'm doing. Then I'll go for a little black down here. Hit the brown. So I'm picking up different colours then, you see, as I go. A bit of brown there. Maybe a hint of brown just there. Kind of darkness coming up into the back of the board. And then we have the tail. And let's just simply keep the tail nice and loose again. Let's go for some brown, Naples yellow, and some white, okay? They're dark, but they're a bit of a brightness to them as well. Maybe a hint of black. So you can see now, it's a very light, almost like a grey cappuccino colour, isn't it? Okay, let's just go one, two, just like that, okay? I think a bit longer. Then, let's just take our pointy brush. We'll go with a little black and a little burnt umber. And let's pop some dark into some of these. There's one. I mean, this is a lot of fun. I'm keeping this nice and simple. You see what I mean? It's just simple. Another one there. Another one there. And I'm going to just lock. I'm just going to sort of allow it to flick through creating direction of the feathers, that's all. And I know it doesn't look exactly like the photograph, okay? It may look worse, I don't know, but I'm just going to go with it like this. Because I think this looks rather nice. I'll take a little black, put a little black in there. I'm going to soften that black down into the feathers, okay? Then we have the light colour and it's simply white with some Naples yellow. And I'm trying to simplify this now as best I can for you, okay? Just to help you follow me along. You can just keep it simple. I do everything with a kind of a single flick like this. Do you know when I'm painting feathers like this? I tend to do everything with a simple flick. Just kind of one solid flick. I find that works best. From the top down here. Okay, clean the brush. So you kind of get the idea, don't you? You see what I mean? Now, I'm going to make a little corner there and a little one there. I know it's not exactly the same, I can see it, but I don't mind really. I'm just trying to simplify it and keep it fun. I'm going to darken one or two of these just at the back there with some brown and some black. Nice and simple. Like so. And I'm going to darken one or two of those. And it's the beauty about working wet into wet. You can kind of soften 
really soften colours through wonderfully. Now, you see that very bright on the tail, okay? I'm going to try something to try and really lift that. I'm going to try a little white with blue. It may not work, but I think it'll really capture the light. You see what I mean? I think it works. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that and I think I'll work away on the little feet. I think the feet need a bit of work, don't they? Let me just refine this hair. And I might even darken just along here as well. Like that. Let's put in the claws. The claws are going to be tricky. I can see a rich pinky red, pinky blacky kind of a red. Black and some crimson. Let's try it. Maybe some burnt sienna. So it's a very rich dark ready colour. You can't really see the claws on this because they're folded in. So it's basically just a suggestion of the claw. Just a suggestion of something going on. Okay? I know it's very difficult to get little details like this in but let's just try and get an impression if we can um this one over here is kind of just simply a lot of kind of dark marks if you will take some burnt sienna and pop a little burnt sienna just like that No, I don't know if that looks acceptable, but I think it's all right. And I pop a little touch of black just down underneath. So this is really kind of going into detail, this tutorial. Um, I know it's it's a lot trickier than i said it was going to be okay i know that but i think i you know i really wanted it to stand out i really did i'm going to pop a little touch of white just on the tips of some of these there we go okay Feathers. Time for the feathers. How are we doing on time? You know, we're 48 minutes in. That's not bad at all. I mean, realistically, it's not bad for a painting like this. Let's start with the darker feathers over here. It's, I can see a hint of a green, it's a blue. Um, simply look at the colours and see what's there. I'll start with a darker kind of a blue first, I think. Let me get some paint. Okay, some phthalo blue. And let's take some phthalo blue. I'll take a little white. I'm going to take some burnt umber. That turns into a kind of a green, doesn't it? Greeny blue. Let's take a little black. Then I'll go with a little hint of crimson. So lots of colours here are now mixed in. It's a very subdued kind of a colour. Let's have a look. Okay, maybe a bit more blue. 
I'm basically going to start at the bottom, okay? Because the brush I have at the moment is not bad. I think the shape of the brush that I'm using is not bad for painting feathers. If you have a filbert brush as well, that will work absolutely fantastic. So I'll just keep going like this now. Going like that, in, in. Just like so. And remember, always keep your brush in the direction of the feathers, okay? That shows the movement. It gives you the movement. I'll take more burnt umber. As it comes over, it gets a bit darker, doesn't it? And I may take a hint of black. And they really kind of go outwards then, don't they? They really start to stretch outwards. I will also take some thinners in this, the thinners just to help get that solid kind of brush stroke that I want. You see what I mean? And we will add little details to all of this then with the pointy brush, okay? So don't be, don't be afraid. We're going to keep adding little things to this as we go along. I'm going up here like that. And we go up a nice flick up like this. It's entirely up to yourself how far you want to go with this. Do you know, if you're if you're a little apprehensive, you can just leave it. So I'm going to take some burnt umber, look, and I'm going to just start putting some burnt umber in under the wing over here. You see, there's that lovely kind of brown there. And what happens then, you see, because there are oils, my brush is picking up some of this color here and it's moving it around lovely, you see? So I'm picking up the color and then I'm going back up and it's putting some color up there for me. So everything then is kind of blending in together wonderfully. You see what I mean now? That's just fantastic. I love the way those colours pick each other up. Then I'm going to take some Naples yellow and I'm going to pop some Naples yellow into it along here. You can see little touches of light where it's catching. And I'm doing all this with a normal flat brush, okay? No detail brush, no detail brushes here. So now I have the basic done, I'm going to go to my pointy brush. Then I'm going to start taking some dark. Let's get some dark colour. Let's get some brown and a little black. Okay, plenty of thinners in there. And let's start adding some darks to some of these. Simple brush strokes just like that, okay? Nice and simple. And we can go out. That's giving us some nice dark lines. Black with a little blue, because it does, there is a lot of dark blue in those feathers over here. Like that, you see? Now that's nice. And you can be nice and fluid as well, you see, with your brush. And that's what I love about um, painting birds and things like that. You could be just nice and loose and fluid, okay? So the feathers, they kind of almost come around like that and up, don't they? Oh, 
Okay. Now I'll take some black on its own and I'm going to put some black in up there. But even though I'm using black, as soon as I put it on, it's mixing with the colour already there. So it's not just black. Do you understand what I mean? There's a lot of different colours all softening in together. So we have the darks in. What I'm going to do next now actually is I'm going to go back to my small brush, okay? My little flat brush. I'm going to take some blue. I'm going to make a nice purple. Now just like what we did before, I'm going to make a nice purple, little bit of white, and lots of red, okay? And I'm going to pop a little purple just to complement the background. In the round hair look, okay? Again, I'll take a bit of white. Go lighten it a bit. Okay, then I can also see a little hint of green. I'm going to go to a smaller brush. I don't know if you can see on the reference photograph there, but there's a lovely hint of a turquoise in there. It's a beautiful greeny kind of a turquoise. I need to mix a nice green off of this, okay? Nice bright, bright green. Okay. Yeah, I can see just a hint of it just around here and there. See what I mean? There's just a tiny hint of it in there. I don't know if you can see that now on camera. I hope you can. I really do. Then I'm going to go to Naples Yellow. So my process, you see, I'm just going along, picking out where I see lights and darks. That's kind of my process. And just keep looking at your reference photograph, okay? Keep looking constantly for where those lights are. So I can see a couple in the darkness coming out like this. Okay. Take some Naples yellow. I'm going to pop some Naples yellow here and there, and that's really going to capture the light on those, isn't it? You can really see now how that Naples yellow has just kind of carried your eye right across the painting. Then I'll take a little burn cyanide and I'm going to just pop some of that in along here because it's a kind of a warm colour in under there take some brown burnt umber I'm going to pop a lot of burnt umber in under there with some black burnt umber and black it gets very dark in there, doesn't it? So I just keep looking over at my photograph and just trying to copy it as best I can. I'm not making it exact, I don't want it to look exact. But just looking at where the darks and the lights are and popping them in, okay? I think I'm done with that. There's just one or two little things I want to add before I move on. 
and that's a little light blue at the tips of some of these. You can see how that's really capturing the light. Okay, just like that. Maybe one or two down here. Let's move on to the other side. Isn't this coming on nicely? Okay, again, I'm going to go with the darker colour first. I think a nice neutral kind of a blue. So I'll take some phthalo blue. I'll take cadmium red, little white. Now, lots of cadmium red in this. Rather than the pink, rather than the crimson, the cadmium red is a softer colour, so it'll make it much, much softer, okay? And let's have a look at this now. Okay, that's not bad. You don't want completely different hues on either wing. You want to keep them similar, okay? So let's go and do this. Being careful with the yellow. Little touch of thinners. Maybe a little white in there. And try and get similar sizes and shapes as the other wing, okay? Because I don't want one looking slightly smaller than the other one. Now, it's okay if they are slightly different, but I don't want them looking completely different, if that makes sense. Um, I'll take some black, and I'll darken them as they come out here. Okay, like that. And then let's follow the pattern up into the wing like that, you see? Now, okay, I'm happy enough with that. I go to my round brush, small round brush, and I'm going to get lots of, maybe start with some dark over here, okay? Let's get some dark. Let's get some blue with some black, a little bit of pink. Just kind of, it's just a really dark colour. And let's go and pop some of that in. I do apologise if my hands are shaking. Getting very, very shaky lately, I must say. Now, I'm going to go with then brown, nice rich brown up here. Maybe a hint of burnt sienna. And I'm just kind of flicking it down into the colour. You see the way it's just a very ruffled look, like an opened wing look, very ruffled. Then I'll go into the black with some of the pink. You can see I'm basically just taking certain colours. Wherever you see the dark colours, put in the darks. That's all I say. I keep saying it. Put in the darks where you see the darks. Okay. And it's a much more in-depth tutorial, isn't it? I hope it's not too complicated for some of you to follow. Um, to be honest, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it like this. I thought I would just tear up the canvas halfway through it and throw it in the bin. Thankfully, it has worked out.
thankfully. But it could have just as easily went pear-shaped, okay? Very easily. It's very difficult to know. Um, it's very difficult to know if it's going to work or not. I'm not used to painting something with so much detail, okay? Um, so I am glad it seems to work out so far. So far, so good. It's working out. But yes, let's hope it keeps going like that. No, I'm just going to refine some little bits up around there. I'll go to my smaller brush. Let's go to the small brush for a change. Let's get some bright white. Bright white up here. Lovely bright white. A little bit on the, you can see the tail is kind of poking through at the back over there. And on the tips, we have some nice bright white on the tips up here. Tips of the wings. Beautiful and colourful, isn't it? Pick up lots of thick white on its own, look. And just drag it in. Each brush stroke, one single brush stroke, okay? And it seems to be on both sides of the wings, doesn't it? Or the feathers, I mean. Seems to be on both sides. Front and back. Am I right? Would that be right? Hope it's right. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there slowly, a little bit of dark on the back of that one up there, and I'm going to pop some little bits of white. Up here, even some Naples yellow. I'll pop some Naples yellow around here, just to kind of ruffle this up a little bit. I don't want it too, too flat. And then I'm going to take some black. And I'm going to pop a little black in just around here to create more of a shadow. There. And so from here on then, I'm simply going to just go along and add little touches of color little maybe some darks look let's get some nice darks so some little patches of black here and there um one or two out here like that because it's really dark out there isn't it um pop a little dark in behind one or two of those I'm going to pop a little colour, light colour, down in here. Like that, just softening it through. Okay. And I think a little of the green I'm going to pop a little touch of the green through these as well, just to give it that shimmer of green. You see, just to complement the other side, just that little tiny shimmer. Now, the next thing, 
and probably the last thing I'm going to do is some purple. I'm going to create some lovely deep, deep purple. Okay, and I want to add a little touch of purple shadows here and there. So for instance, I'm going to add a little of that lovely blue purpley colour to some of the wings. And I'm going to come over here and add a little touch of it to some of those. I think it'll just sort of brighten. Brighten them up slightly, okay? A little bit of rich blue. And I'll pop a little of that again in here. And that just kind of brings the shadows out, okay? So how was that? My friends, I think I'm pretty well finished with this. I don't want to overdo it. I might just add, I know it's not on the photograph, but I might just add a little, just to catch the light, okay? That's all, just to catch the light, nice and simple. And I'm going to just lighten around here again, refine some of that. Okay, and just maybe on the head, I just want to just tidy up. There, bring it down like that. Just show that light coming across and oh I forgot I actually forgot a little light on top of the beak and maybe around the eye and last but not least a little dab of white on the eye and there we go my friends, thank you so, so much for watching. I have to say, I really, really enjoyed painting this. I know it was a little complicated, but honestly, you should definitely try this. Just take your time and try and just be nice and free with the brush, okay? Now I have a frame which I painted earlier. It's hanging up behind me here. Let me just get the frame and let's stick a frame on this to see how it looks. Now, I'm sure this is going to pop out. And there we are, look at that. And my friends, look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? I'm absolutely thrilled with this. So let me zoom in. I see, can I zoom in? Do try it, honestly folks, do try it. Um, just remember, put in your lights and your darks where you see them, and you can always just kind of blend them together then afterwards, okay? That's what I would say. Okay, my friends. Let me turn it slightly, you can see me properly. Thank you so much. It's been so much fun painting this for you. Um, it's really lovely. I'm very, very happy with this. That's it for this week's folks. That's all folks. Um, pop over to Patreon if you would like to support me. I'm just finishing a beautiful, beautiful forest scene for Patreons. Um, dark gray forest, kind of a moody forest with bright red foliage. It's gonna be absolutely stunning, I hope. Pop over there and check that out if you like, um, if, you, if you would like to support me. Thank you very much. Please do subscribe. I will see you next week. Have a go off of this and see what you think. Just keep it simple. Try and simplify it, okay? Thank you so much. Signing out. Um, this is Easy Oil Painting. Good day, everyone, and God bless.